Here are three different pattern styles that you can use to shade your characters in Adobe Illustrator. So if we jump into Illustrator, here's the three different styles that I'm going to be trying to replicate for you guys today. The first pattern, kind of a wiggly line style. The second one, a distressed crosshatch sort of style. And then the third one, some basic dots. So this is the design that I'm going to be working on. Um, as you can see at the moment, I just have the shading in just a basic light gray fill color. So the first style that I'm going to show you is the basic dot design. So for this, you're going to need the swatches panel. If you head over to the right hand side, this is where the swatches panel tends to be. If not, head to windows and swatches and that will open the panel for you. What you want to do is on the left bottom left hand corner of the panel, select swatches library menu. Then scroll down to patterns, basic graphics, basic graphic dots. This will open a library of a bunch of different swatches that are available for you to use. If I select one of my shapes, then head over into the swatches panel. As you can see, there's a bunch of different dot patterns available to me in a range of different sizes. So I'm going to select dot DPI 50. And as you can see here as well, that the swatches are still um, being added within our own personal swatch library, which is useful for being able to switch between. To me, the circles are a little bit too big. So the way that we want to reduce the size of these is to head over to the left hand panel and double click on scale. And this is going to open an option that will allow us to be able to make changes to the size of the pattern. One thing to mention is normally by default, the transform objects is selected. Make sure that that is unticked. Otherwise, it's going to transform the object as well as the pattern. Whereas in this case, we just want the pattern. So now we can just head up to the uniform and simply change the scale of the pattern while still maintaining the parameters of that the pattern sits within. I think maybe sort of 46% works here. So I'm going to press OK. So now to replicate that across the rest of the objects that I wish to use to shade, I'm going to head over to the magic wand tool. I'm going to select one of the objects. As you can see, this has now selected all of those with the same color. I'm going to then head down to the eyedropper tool and then select the pattern that I've just used to copy the same attributes. And there we go. This is how we can then use the basic dots in Adobe Illustrator to add shade into our illustrations. Hey guys, if you like the video so far, then please consider liking and subscribing. Also, drop a comment below what you'd like to see in my next video. Until then, let's jump on to the next style. Okay, style number two is going to be the crosshatch style. But this time around, I'm going to create my own pattern. So what I'm going to do is head over to the line segment tool. Um, and then I'm just going to draw a single line. If I just zoom in here to make it easier to see. I then head up to effects, distort and transform and roughen. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to reduce the percentage of the size to around 1%, change relative to absolute and points to smooth. Then press OK. What that's done is just added a bit more of a roughen effect to the line. I'm then going to head up to object and expand appearance. So I want to have a seamless pattern. So what I will now do is again, if I zoom in here, I'm going to select my path, head up to the pen tool, then select the last anchor point and add a small straight line. And that's important for the next step where we want to duplicate this path so that we can have a seamless pattern. So next we want to right click copy and then right click paste in front. Then drag up the duplicate path until it intersects with the top of the other path. And as you can see the, the paths are not quite matching and we want it to be seamless. So, so I'll select the duplicate, right click and head down to transform, I will then select reflect and horizontal because we want it to be flipped, then press OK. And now, as you can see, we have a seamless stroke. 
So we can now select both of these. I might increase the stroke actually to two points. Then I'm going to select both, head up to Object, Pattern, Make. So this will open the Pattern Options menu. Um, everything will be hidden apart from the patterns, but that's absolutely fine. You can still cancel or you know save your own pattern. So I'm going to increase the width between these. Um, I think five pixels is going to work here. Um, and then the rest of things I'm just going to leave. So now that I'm happy, I'm going to select Done. Then as you can see in my right hand swatch panel, I now have a new pattern. So now if I go to my illustration and select one of the shapes, I can now select my new pattern. And as you can see, this has now added the new pattern style that we have added. So one thing I'd now like to do is to maybe change the direction of these lines. So this time I'm going to head over to the rotate tool. And as you can see here, it's now rotating the whole object as well as the pattern. So we want to unclick object. Now we can use the angle to change the degree in which the pattern is being displayed. I quite like this sort of angle, so I'm going to press OK. And then following the technique that I showed you in the previous example, I'm going to head up to the magic wand tool. I'm going to select all of the objects that I wish to add the pattern to, select the eyedropper tool, and then select the new crosshatch pattern. And there we go. That's the second pattern sorted. Now let's move on to the third. So the third and final style is going to be this sort of wavy pattern that we have. And to do that is super simple again. I'm just going to head over to my left hand panel and select the line tool. Draw out a line. Then select my line, head up to effects, distort and transform and zigzag. In the zigzag options, I'm going to change my points to smooth. And then I'm going to reduce my size down to around, I think, four pixels is good there. And I'm going to change my segment to five and then press OK. I'm going to head up to Object and Expand Appearance. Then once again, head over to Object, Pattern, Make. This looks good to me, so I'm just going to press Done straight away. And once again, I now have the new pattern in my swatches. So now I can simply head over with the shape selected. And there we go, it's now adding my new style. And then once again, grab my magic wand tool, select the rest of the shapes, and select the new pattern. So we have the three styles all done, um, but one thing that I still want to be able to do is edit these colors so they're not just black and white. The simplest way to do this is by using the rework color tool. So I select my first design, then head up to edit, edit colors and recolor artwork. There's an empty space here, which I then click, which will then ask me if I would like to add a new color to the current harmony. I select yes. I then select the rectangle and then here I can then change the HSB colors to whatever color I would like to use. And this is going to also edit the colors of our pattern. I then select OK. And if you then look in the swatches panel, it also creates a new pattern swatch, this time in the green color that we've just made. I'll do the same thing again for the next one. Simply head over edit colors, recolor artwork, Click on this section to add a new color harmony. And then adjust the color pickers to change the design colors.
Thanks for watching guys. If you found it useful, please make sure to like, comment and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video.